Recently, I tried out Godot for the first time, because in their desperate attempt for money, Unity burned their entire community, and I made a very terrible game. But it taught me how good Godot could be, and after that video did rather well, I thought Godot deserved some more attention. So today, I'm going to be remaking some absolutely iconic Flash games that everyone played in IT class when the teacher wasn't looking. First things first, let's take a trip down memory lane to the peak of gaming, the 2000s, which can be summed up entirely by the World of Warcraft episode South Park, full of Doritos, Mountain Dew and Edgelords. And a standout from this era was Newgrounds.com. Newgrounds is home to a massive library of indie games and movies, still going strong to this day, and was where every aspiring developer wanted to see their creations published. Some of these games were true hits, kickstarting the careers of many developers, including the founder of the site, Tom Fulp, who would go on to start up the Behemoth, the collective behind Alien Hominid and Castle Crashers, or Edmund McMillan, the mind behind Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac. But for every Happy Wheels or Meat Boy that came out during this time period, there were thousands of horrendously bad, poorly made, and ethically questionable games that would just not go down too well today. Scrolling through the list of games on the site, a few stood out to me, such as African Detroit Cop, Crucify Me Jesus, or the endless list of games where the main character is for some reason Bin Laden. It was a different time, and looking back at these games is really something. But once you get past that absolute mess, there are games in there that are actually worth remembering. So let's get into it with an era-appropriate monster-fueled montage. Well, that was something. With that nostalgia trip all done, let's get making our own versions of these classics. The plan here is to make a few games, each one more complex than the other, and hopefully by doing this, I'll get some great experience with the engine and have a good time doing it. Now, I know the last video's whole premise was learning the basics of Godot, but from the massive gap in uploads, you might be able to tell that I haven't exactly had the time recently, but to be fair, I did go from here to there, got married, went travelling, flew to there, and then back, and then there, and then back. But I think I'm done for now, and ready to get back to making some games. So let's do that. The first game I'm going to start with is something very simple, Helicopter. The entire premise is travel as far as you can without colliding with the walls and obstacles. You click the mouse to go up, you let go to go down, very easy. So I'm going to need a helicopter that is affected by gravity and moves forward at a constant rate, a camera to chase the helicopter, and a map to navigate around. The helicopter is very simple, it's just a character 2D that has a fixed horizontal velocity with a vertical velocity added when the mouse is pressed. With that done, it looks like this, it's, it's very good. Now, I need to have a signal that is called when the helicopter collides with the walls. And this is one of my favourite features of Godot, the signal system. Signals are Godot's implementation of events. They can be assigned in the editor to message functions when they're invoked, and have this really nice inspector element that works especially well with the GDScript editor, as you can drag and drop methods and see what is connected to a signal. They also have the added feature of sending extra parameters, whereas in Unity I'd have to define events specifically with a type, 
These are all handled in the inspector. Each node type has its own default signals, such as hitboxes collision, but also can be added with custom signals for whatever you need. It's clear a lot of thought went into this and makes signaling very easy to learn and utilize. And again, as I picked the easiest game to reproduce first, this only took a few minutes to implement. And now that the game detects collision, I just need to display the distance that the player achieved and then reset the state of the game. The distance that the helicopter travels is really easy to score as the player is always going at a constant rate. It's simply just how long they flew for before they crashed. And with this value, I just need to display it with a simple UI element. And with all that in place, here is helicopter already. This was extremely easy to make, partly due to the game's lack of complexity, partly due to Godot being very good for prototyping. So there we go, my first feature complete game in Godot is done. But to be fair, this is not exactly a dense game. So let's chuck something a bit bigger at this engine and see how it fares. The next genre that was a favorite of mine back in the day was the auto battler style game. In these games, you complete training exercises and then let your character compete in various events to unlock more training to complete more events. It's this very simple sense of progression that's just so addicting and fun. Some of the biggest games that I played in this genre were My Brute, Swords and Sandals, and in a slightly different style, Duck Life. So this next game is going to have a few training mini games to train your character's various stats, and then a battle arena where they take on randomly generated opponents. If you beat the opponents in combat, you'll be rewarded with coins to buy new weapons, making you stronger against the opponents, and the cycle continues. While I was away, I made the art for the game, including backgrounds and items, with which I went for a style that you would see in these games. It's not the cleanest, but Flash games didn't exactly look the best either. So it's perfect for the job. When learning about the various UI elements and nodes, I came across a really weird issue, as it seems like a doe always uses the top left point for the pivot. And in my opinion, this is a pretty terrible way of handling things and something that I felt like I was working against. When I was making the door animations, I could not get them to line up properly with each other. And in the end, the only real way I could do this was to add padding around the sprites that were smaller than the others, which isn't something I'd ever have to do in Unity. As well as this issue, it seems you can't use sprite sheets for UI elements, which meant that as I had used animated buttons for the doors to get the mouse rollover easily, I had to save them as separate files. Again, it's not something that is inherently broken, it's just sort of weird to me. And it doesn't seem fully fleshed out. But maybe this is a me problem, and I'm just looking at it all wrong. I'm sure you can let me know in the comments what I'm missing, but for now, it does what it needs to. The first stage I'm going to tackle is the character setup. So I'll create a script that's going to store the stats for the player, including their strength, their stamina, reflexes, and their gold count. This node will be persistent throughout every scene and will just exist as its own entity, as the character structure in each scene will be independent, as it only exists as a visual indicator for each game. The first training session will be for strength, which is a button mashing style mini game to curl weights in a gym. For this, I need a value that goes from 0 to 100, and on every press, the value is increased, and it decreases over time. The player gains XP when the value hits 100, but if it's held at the top for too long, the player will lose a lot of stamina, and when it runs out, the training will end. And so, the next stat to train is stamina, with a side-scrolling platformer style game, similar to the Google Dino game, where you must run for as long as you can, while avoiding obstacles coming your way. Similar to the strength training, the player is rewarded depending on how long they survive for. To reward the player for doing well, the XP gained will scale up the further you get. So for every 10 meters you make it, the XP gain is increased by 10%, which should reward the player for trying to go as far as possible. And then the final stat is the character's reflexes, which are trained by dodging all sorts of items and projectiles being thrown at you. To dodge, the player presses the arrow keys in the direction away from the object, in a Guitar Hero style game. Each run of this game is a set amount of random objects and the reward is calculated based on how many were dodged and the best streak of dodges. And now the player can fully train their character, it's time to head to the arena for battle. The battling is actually the easiest part of the game. Each character will have a timer that ticks down for each swing of their fists or weapon. The length of the timer will be based on the type of weapon they have, 
when the characters are attacked, they will have a chance to dodge, which is based on their reflex stat. If the hit is successful, the attack will do damage based on the weapon and strength stat. And the amount of damage each character could take is based on their stamina stat. After a successful hit, the timer will reset. But if the attack misses, a short delay is going to be added to the recovery. And then onto the outcome of the battle. If the player loses, they will take a hit to their stats, lose some gold, and a kick back to the training room. But if they're successful, they will gain some gold to upgrade their weapon of choice and progress to bigger, stronger enemies. And now they've gained their gold, the final section of the game is the shop, to purchase the weapons and gear I mentioned before. Each weapon type will add bonuses to different stats and will have damage modifiers based on your current abilities. Some weapons will benefit from a higher strength stat, some require stamina and some require reflexes. This should add some vague form of challenge and decision making for the player to keep it engaging. The different opponents will also specialise in stats, which means the player can't just use one stat and weapon type on every enemy. And with all that in place, the game is complete and the warriors are ready to fight in the arena. So, how was my experience with Godot during these projects? Well, quite frankly I hated using it. The way that sprites are handled in Godot is so far behind what Unity offers, and as I enjoy working with 2D games, it's just so off-putting to me. Most of my issues I had with the engine were related to sprites, be it the import settings, their pivot points or animation, but it's something I just can't seem to get past. As I've already said, maybe this is just my fault for looking at it wrong, but it's not something I'm going to be sticking to for now. Which is a real shame, because there are parts of Godot that I really enjoy using, such as the signal system, the way the scenes are handled, and the extensive node types, which makes designing objects very easy. Originally, I was going to make a third game in Godot, to try out the 3D side of things, but after this lacklustre experience, I've decided against that. So instead, tune into my next video, where I torture myself by making a game in Unreal Engine, because oh boy am I going to struggle with that one. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Apologies it took so damn long to make, but I did it. Make sure you leave a like and comment down below how stupid I am and how easy Godot is. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.